Hi, welcome to state-based modeling with Tim. In the previous video, I went over a three-step program on how to develop a state-based model for several basic systems given their diagrams. In this video, I'm going to go over this example here you're seeing on the screen of an RLC circuit. And we're going to try to develop a state-based model using the three-step program that I specified in the previous video. Um, for a quick recap, I'm just going to go over the steps quickly again for those who have not seen my previous video. So step one says you develop relevant differential equations from a given system. Step two says we identify or select your state variables and we can identify state variables as the variables that have derivatives in the time domain with respect to time. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, and then step three says you can you must organize your di your differential equations so that they are in the canonical form, and this is the canonical form of a state space model, which will be sufficient for now. Okay, so using these same steps, we're gonna try to attempt to solve this problem that we are pressed with. Okay, I I have said in the past that sometimes you will find that you have more variables with respect to time, and they may appear to have derivatives. So you're going to have to be very picky about which variables are your state space models, are your state variables. Sorry about that. So th this is one of the examples where we actually find ourselves having to pick which are our state variables and having to actually figure out how many state space variables we have. So let's look at the circuit right now. This is a series circuit, series RLC circuit, and we have two active components, and that's going to... That's going to be a strong hint because their characteristics are dependent on time as opposed to the resistor. So I'm talking particularly about the inductor and, and the capacitor. So this tells us two active components in a series circuit. This is a second order system. So we're going to have two state variables. And it is up to you to choose which you want to be your state variables. But to simplify this question, I have selected V2 and v2 dot to, as our state variables. Remember, it's the state variable. Your state variables are proceeding derivatives, incrementing uh, derivatives. So that's why it's v2 and v2 dot. v2 dot means the derivative of v2. Okay, so without wasting time, let's start on with the steps. So I think I'm gonna use a red pen for this one. So we're gonna start with, obviously, step one. We're gonna have to develop our differential equations. So how do we do that? Well, we don't have to start over complicated with a lot of science and maths. We can just look at this, like I said, it's a series circuit and we can solve it using KVL. The voltage is the voltage V1 is the input and it's being distributed across the circuit from the resistance to the inductance to the capacitance. So we can write this one out as V1 is equals to the voltage of the resistor plus the voltage of the inductor, plus the voltage of the capacitor. Okay, so now the voltage, now we wanna write this out in terms of the, of, of the right symbols that are presented in our diagram. Okay, we know that the voltage of the, uh, of the resistor can be expressed in Ohm's law, which just says that the voltage across the resistor is just its current multiplied by uh, the the resistance and now VL I, w I hope that you will remember that and I think I should make a strong note uh, it should be noted that the voltage of inductance is L di dt okay and the current is the current of a capacitor is the capacitance multiplied by the derivative of the voltage of the capacitance, just like that. Okay, so that should set us on our way. Okay, uh, so VL is L di dt. And we can go back to green, we can go back to red now. It's L di dt. Notice that since this is a series circuit, that this I here, the I across this inductance, is the same I across this capacitance, 
the same i across that it is this i of t so that i is very general and it is in fact equals to that which is equals to that so we have said that our state variable must be v2 so i hope you can notice that v2 is actually equals to vc and vc is over here so that's another thing to notice we can say v2 is equals to vc and this is where vl is and that's where vr is to make things a bit more clear okay so this one vc is going to be equals to v2 there's no need to expand on that for now okay we haven't really reached um, a full solution here but what i want us to notice now is that we have we want to develop a time domain solution that is going to express um, terms of v2 and v2 dot only but here we have something else that's a function of time which is i and we're going to have to work on removing that so let's look at our equations here and see what we can do let's look at this one we said ic is equals to c dv dc dt okay so that's <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot to say um ic which is just simply i i think i can remove the i the, the i can remove the c sorry is just c dv dv c but vc is just v2 as i pointed up up here so i'll just leave that and then i'll say dt and i want us to notice that dv uh, dt can be written as v dot 2 that's interesting okay so we can say i is equals to c v dot 2 and that's we're already one way one step further to solving our problems so i will say here down here v1 is equals to c so rc v2 i'm just simply coping this in plus l the i but instead of saying i i will say c v2 dot dt plus v2 and what happens here if i and I, i'm just going to express here i'm just going to break this apart oh i don't think i need the, the, that many dots so i think i'm just going to leave it like this okay and i will have l c because c is a constant it doesn't get derivated and then if we derivate v2 dot we just get uh, v2 dot dot so that's the second derivative of v2 and that's going to be v2 and just like that we have a second order derivative system just like prom as we expected because this is a second order system with two active components uh, that are that, that have properties with respect to time we get a second order system just like that okay so now we can take it another step further so we can go to the second step that's how we take a step further so step two says um, we identify our um, state variables but we already know our state variables so we can say let x1 you know i have a particular preference for using x because our canonical form says it must be uh, our our state vector must be named x so i will go with that x1 is equals to v2 because that's the first one um, according to my choice our first state vector is v2 and our second state vector is v2 dot and then i'm gonna say x2 is v2 dot okay notice that v2 dot is also x1 dot and that's very interesting okay and so our x2 dot because we also need to find x2 dot our x2 dot is simply v2 
dot dot and well we, we're not going to introduce another state variable just to express that we're not going to introduce an x3 we did say we only have two state variables and here are the here they are x1 and x2 so we're not going to introduce another one so how do we express this one this state variable is expressed by rearranging this equation and we're going to do it a bit later just after this and then we need an input we need an input vector so for our input vector for this one it's just going to be v1 because that's the input voltage into the circuit v1 going through the circuit and if you want to be complete we can say we also need an output uh, voltage an output vector an output vector is going to be v2 which is our capacitor voltage and v2 we, we can clearly see here it is x1 okay so now we have all our state variables now we move on to step three now step three says we must organize our differential equations so that they stand in terms of our um stand in terms of our canonical form okay so now our differential equation of interest is this one where we say v1 so we're gonna instead of using v1 v2 dot v2 dot dot and v2 we're gonna start using our state variables input variables and output variables so v1 is already u is equals to i'm just gonna look down here is equals to rc v2 dot plus lc oh sorry about that i was supposed to change that i just copied it directly v2 dot is just um, x2 and lc i don't have much screen to work with here um, lc v2 dot dot and i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that as x2 dot plus v2 and what did we say v2 was it was x1 okay i feel like there's something missing here let me look at them and cr okay i think we should be fine with that okay and then we rearrange this if we rearrange this um, we're gonna get we want our x2 yes uh, that's I knew I was making a mistake x2 dot dot it wasn't supposed to be no oh yeah that's v2 dot dot not x2 dot dot so okay that's x2 dot dot and if we rearrange this and make x2 dot the subject we're gonna get um let me put this in brackets minus x1 minus rc x2 plus u one over lc and i hope you can see where that comes from okay and that's for x2 dot, dot uh, that's for x2 dot uh, the second derivative of x2 and then for the first derivative um, of x1 this is just going to be um, x2 and y again is just x1 i think that should be it and now we can write this in matrix form and matrix form remember i'm just going to write this again so that everyone always remembers i think i'm going to write this one in black um here we go it's x dot is equals to a x plus b u and y is equals to c x plus d u yeah so it's almost poetic um okay so now we can write the first one so that's x1 x2 dot dot 
is equals to and because the second one is the uh, the second one is the most busiest i think i'm going to start with that and minus 1 over lc minus r over l and then the f um, x1 dot is just represented in terms of x2 so that's going to be 0 1 and that's going to be x1 and that's going to be x2 plus and this is going to be 1 over lc and that's going to be 0 that's going to be u okay and the last one is just going to be y cuz we don't know what y is uh we just say it's, as it's it's the y matrix or the y vector okay and it's going to be 1 0 x1 x2 and this is our state space model for the circuit when we use v1 v2 and v2 dot i hope this has been very simple and easy to understand for a lot of people in the next video before i end this i would like to do this question uh, this, work on this circuit again but we're going to try to change up our variables so that our state variables is, um, I think we're going to choose V2 and I of T to be our state variables. I'm going to decide on that and then we're going to work from there. And um, if you are feeling very confident, you can do the question where I will say state variables. It's I of T and let me just check here if I'm going to be doing it. And, and V2. Yeah, so we're still going to be having V2 of T. Until then, take care.